the Peter Badger winners get into Harvington Hall for free. They do indeed. Now, you know how much we love making oh, things yeah. here on Blue Peter. Completely. And you won't want to miss uh, next Monday's show when Connie will be making this. Hey, this doll's kitchen is not just any old kitchen. It comes with a state-of-the-art frost-free funky fridge. Is it an ice cube dispenser? Uh, no ice cube dispenser. Oh. It's a 1950s retro one. They're very in. And it's also got a designer oven. In fact, it's got everything, including the kitchen sink. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And look at this. A very trendy work area. Perfect mm. for making a cake. And look, we've got a domestic goddess Granite busy making tops. one. <laughs> and a top of domestic goddesses. Connie. Oh, thank you. And you're a domestic godside. It's on your pinny. Ooh, and let's you. go to the kitchen and whip up a banana and walnut cake that Jamie Oliver would be proud of. It's full of nutrients and it's just as delicious for breakfast as it is in your packed lunchbox. So there you go. The possibilities are endless. They are. It is a cracker. Let's get stuck in. Let's get cracking. Okay, sorry about the rustle. We had to put our microphones on our pinnies. Now, first up, you will ne need to get the key ingredients ready. So to begin with, you need to roast your walnuts, which will give them a better flavour in the cake. So spread your nuts onto a baking sheet and then roast them in the oven for seven to eight minutes and no longer than that, otherwise they'll taste really bitter. No good bitter nuts. Now, uh, these ones are done to perfection and they're nice and cool now and ready to use. Right, Con, I'm doing mm -hmm. the bananas and basically going to need to peel three and mash them uh, of the bananas which I've already done here I've used a fork and uh, with the other banana con which you've already done very nicely I uh, peel that one as well I have. obviously and then chop it into a chunks of about a centimetre thick yes. uh, I know some people prefer the green banana rather than the yellow one but on this occasion go for a ripe banana nice yellow one because they are a lot easier to mash yeah and they're better but don't mash these ones that you put in just leave these in and just stir them in rather than mm. mash they're good because they're sweeter now everything is already more or less and we need to get Get a large mixing bowl to put in all the remaining ingredients which we've got measured up neatly for us here and it's easiest to do this part in stages so I am going to be doing the mixing and Simon is going to be doing the adding I certainly it am so quite a handful. let me just get you started don't mix okay. yet because it could be an absolute disaster First up, that's the butter and then and now we're going to go for the sugar. Hang on, I'll tell you oh, what. Shall I just, a bit shall I just pop the eggs in first oh, because I then. know what's going to happen otherwise. No, and it's good because it gives me a bit of liquid to work with in my mixing strategy. There you go, Con, mix away. Go. Okay, this bit's going to be loud. There we go. So, once it's getting to a nice consistency, oh, this is lovely, then, I hope you can hear me, we can add the flour. <laughs> All right, yes, make sure you stop mixing for this bit, especially using electric mix, and let's... Add in the flour, Con. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Beautifully Two done. varieties of flour. And watch the powder. There it goes. Very nice. And then, she said, speaking louder, we're going to be adding the baking powder. Which is just there. There's the baking powder. In she goes. Yes, a bit of cinnamon. Okay, this is cinnamon. Love the smell of cinnamon, delightful. Oh, it's so nice. In that goes. Reminds me of Christmas, I often find. And fruit zest. Now, this is the rind of lemons and it's been grated up. And there's also a bit of orange in and there as well, orange. which I cheekily right. added. Oh, cheekily lo added. lovely touch. I think it will make all the difference. <laughs> there you go. And we are, of course, going to give you all the measurements for that in case you're wondering, hang on a sec, they're rushing to it and we don't know what we're doing. Mm. So there we go, everything is mixed up to a lovely Delightful. consistency and the cameramen are very excited. Uh, now next up we are going to fold in the chopped banana and walnuts. So here so, it comes, look at that, gooey and delightful. Look, I've got lots of mixture left on my whisk, make sure you, you get can up, make get sure you off. get a good usage. I'll we don't like to waste, but I'll there we go. I'll cue the nuts at this point. Okay. Here come the nuts and just... Uh, Guiding hand. I have washed my hands after handling the uh, rather smelly fish that yeah. the piranhas didn't want. Maybe they'd prefer some of this. Who knows? I made sure he did in the Harvington Hall film. There we go. And once you've folded that in, mm. you are ready to get your grease tin. Oh, Si, you are so good in the kitchen. I love to keep a tidy I'm kitchen. I'm going to miss Si. <laughs> That's, he does, actually. His kitchen is very tidy. I've been there. I've seen it. He's a hygienic man, which can be a rare thing these days. That's ready. Right. Shall we <laughs> pop it in the tin then? Okay. Do you want me to do that while you run through the recipe? Okay, I shall recap what you need and all the measurements. So here we go. Four bananas, 
175 grams of walnut pieces smushed up nicely, little ones. Uh, one round a teaspoon of baking powder, a level teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You're doing a lovely job, mm. Si. 110 grams of plain flour, 110 grams of whole wheat flour, two varieties of flour there. Uh, the grated zest of one orange, so that's the peel grated up, and the grated zest of one lemon. 110 grams of butter at room temperature, 175 grams of soft brown sugar, and two large eggs. And then, if yeah, you can see Simon doing a lovely job, you need to smooth the top off and make it nice and level when you've transferred to your baking tin. Si, you are so good in the kitchen. And oh, yes. <laughs> next, you need to sprinkle on some demerara sugar, because okay, that, that will make it nice and browned on the top when it's been in the oven. We are ready to get baking, everyone. Okay, so you need to bake the cake in the center of the oven at 180 degrees Celsius. And uh, I'd say for about one and a quarter to one and a half hours until the cake feels nice and springy in the center. Once you've taken it out, you need to let it cool for five minutes, then turn it out onto a wire tray. And once it's completely cool, it's ready to serve. Mm, and you can have it for lunch, you can have it for tea, you can have it for breakfast, or you perhaps you could uh, pop it into your packed lunchbox and take it to school. It's a mm. slice in there, maybe a bit of a Our cameramen look very hungry. I don't think it's going to last until tomorrow. If you've got a nut allergy, like Gary on camera too, you can put raisins in. Now, before you rush off and get baking, here is what is rising in the Blue Peter oven this week. It's all about the pop idols as we celebrate the stars who dominated three decades of music. Matt and Zoe meet some real geezers and bravely tuck into a traditional Viking feast when they visit Iceland. And on Monday, the stars of the Dance Factory head off their production line into our studio. Right, stop. I cannot wait for that. It's going to be really, really good. Delish. Mm. Mm. It's really nice and moist, isn't it? Digest, it's lovely, it's moist, it's beautiful. But if you uh, don't imagine being too healthy, then you could always <laughs> serve it up with a nice bit of clotted cream or perhaps tut, tut. a lovely bit of drip of Jamie honey. Oliver wouldn't like that. No? <laughs> we shall see you next time. See you later. Bye bye. bye. What a cracker. Mm. Oh. 11-year-old Aisha from Beckton took a leaf out of my book when she recreated these Mother's Day flowers. They look blooming marvellous and she earns herself a blue badge. Darlings, darlings, that was wonderful. Blue Peter will be back on Friday at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Don't say that normally. <laughs> this is what I'm telling. Exactly. Anyway, we earlier on asked you to end the connected collector. We asked you to make the connection between today's fairly odd parents and today's ace lightning. Now we've got about 10 callers on the line who think they know the answer. Shall we go to line four? Let's go to line four. Hello, Emma. Hello, Angelica. Hello, Andy. How are you? How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, good, good, good. Glad oh. to be speaking to you. I'm hoping that you've got the right answer for Connected Collective because we want you to get some prizes. What do you think the connection was between Ace Lightning it, and Fed Your Parents? A, Mark and Cosmo. Okay, not too sure, but let's have a look. It Yay! Well done, Emma. That means you've got your hands on all these prizes. Check them out. We've got the CBBC goodies and the DVD player. Have you got a DVD player already? Um, my family's got one, but I haven't. You can have one in your bedroom now. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. And you can have the new exclusive CBBC goodies. Do you like them? Yeah. Excellent. Now, have you been watching the Saturday show? Yeah. What do you think? It's really good. Do you like it? Yeah. Fancy getting guns yourself? No. Yes, because nah. I got guns on Saturday. Didn't you see that? <laughs> I was not happy, but I had a shower cap on, so I wasn't yeah. too bad. Anyway, well done, Emma, OK? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Will we have can more I have your autograph, please? Certainly we'll can. We'll for you. There'll be more Connect It Collect It on Monday, so make sure you're watching. Step on out. Get on down. Feel the rhythm. Cut a move. Shake your booty. Feel the beat. A brand new series that will bring out the dancer in you. Dance Factory. Saturdays at 10.30 on CBBC One. We love that show. Angelica, do you fancy yourself as a dancing hotshot? Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. How do you fancy being one of Johnny's hotshots? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have a look at this. Hi, I'm Johnny <laughs> Wilkinson and I'm searching for the rugby stars of tomorrow. 
This summer, I'm hosting a Rugby Skills Masterclass where I will pass on some trade secrets. I really hope to improve your overall performance on the pitch, your kicking, tackling, passing and running skills. So if you're aged 10 to 14 and have played rugby for a school team or club, then I want to hear from you. You could become one of my hotshots for the future. To find out more about how to get involved, visit the CBBC website, which should have all the details you need. And good luck. So if you'd like to be one of Johnny Wilkinson's hotshots, <laughs> then log on to the web, which is bbc.co.uk forward slash CBBC. Or you could have the address right in as well. CBBC, PO Box 9989, London W12 6PA. There it is, all the details. He's a nice bloke. He's a really nice bloke. No, but I was just, he speaks really well. He does. Maybe he went to Rada. <laughs> He's from the north, isn't he? So oh, yeah, no, no, no. Anyway, 30th of April, get them in, all right? Right now, they're all going to read out some of your emails about your animals. Uh, Richard Dimmick says, my dog, Bonnie, can skip and take me socks off. Thank you to everyone who's emailed in those imaginative emails today. They've been fantastic. Here's something rich is true than you <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> This is News Round. Welcome to the programme, our top stories this afternoon. The estate that's banned residents from swearing. And Big Bird on the loose, an emu makes a bid for freedom. Hello first, an entire...